Welcome back to Raid Guides in a Trench Coat featuring Pandemonium 12 Savage. Phase 2 Palace Athena. The phase where we must infiltrate the metaverse, find Athena's palace, and sleep. Lie the f down and sleep! So you finally tripped and fell your way through Super Chain Theories 2AB, and now you're here, staring down the tentacle hentai god that Alawi has been praying to all of these years. Palace Athena is a stupid easy fight when compared to the Phase 1 variant, because the longer you study, the better you get at it, unlike Phase 1 where nothing can prepare you for the random directions that Party Finder will try to throw you into. That being said, you still have to make it through Phase 1 with a Party Finder group which, this late in the tier, is going to be a lot like landing a hit after taking 3 sand attacks to the face. The marker dance only has two steps, but they're both left feet. This here is the conga line, and this here is the square dance. We'll have a few more dance configurations for mechanics down the line, but this should be enough to get us started. Begin with your burst window, and then move yourself forward onto the left half of the arena as the main tank gets ready to cobble together two half room cleaves into one full in ruled buster. During this, remember to give your tank a little smooch to remind Athena what it's like to have a happy, healthy relationship now that we've gone and killed her husband. She'll never recover from the emotional damage, which will be a boon for the coming mechanics. The first of those mechanics is UAV-1, which has you huddle up on the A-way mark before Honey shrinks the kids. Continue to stay stacked until you're all chained up together, and then run to your designated spots depending on where these three angels are. Supports will end up somewhere between the west and northeast, while DPS will go between the east and southwest. Melees can't complain here, because everywhere on this circular platform is uptime. With the chains broken, lasers will go off, and then you must assume the first dance position. Athena's tentacles will do the talking, and you must do the walking. There are three patterns to collect, and each has a different tentacle sign. If her tentacles are like this, DJ Mixmaster Athena is about to spin some vinyl that you'll need to spin around the inner circumference of. This pattern of tentacles indicates the unbreakable bars of Horizontal Mambo, otherwise known as the Resident Sleeper. And, lastly, this pattern indicates the straightest vertical dance of all, a good old country hoedown. Spread so that your supports are on the inside and your DPS are on the outside so that nobody gets a whiff of the little purple shits that you're all about to take. Throw out some heals in mitigation while not taking an early step into the floor as Lava Lava, and then you'll be staring down the barrel of Classical 1. Bee Pog is the name of the game, and the name of the game is to be Pog, you beta ass alpha bitches. After yet another spicy hit, PlayStation markers fall onto the scene alongside a crashed dice shipping container spilling out some D4s, D6s, and D20s. Find your partner and run away together to your respective D20s of fate, because if you get too far apart then you'll both explode. B Pog means blue to the first column, purple to the second, O to the third because there's no way in Athena's seven hells that this is orange, and green to the far end. On your way there, take note of your other buff. Alpha starts with the letter A, which looks something like a triangle, and betas are squares, so they take the cubes. From your assigned D20, one of you only has one option and should move to stand between the offending die and your D20. The other player will have two options, and just picking one is a completely winnable 50-50. If all four teams do that, it's still a respectable 6.25%, which is a triple digit percentage if you don't think too hard about it. To solve for real, while your D20 is next to two of your shapes, only one of those shapes will be committing monogamy with your D20. The other cheating bitch will have a second D20 that it could try and link up with as well. As such, you should pick the one you know will be faithful to you. Once all of the shapes have tethered themselves out, dodge between four of the shapes and then prepare to bait eight olive oil pizza slices as north-south as you can so that you don't broadside your teammates. Pick a corner of your relevant three or four way markers and, most importantly, don't pick the same one as your allies. Immediately hop out of the conal and then it's time for Caloric 1. Although first there's a spicy trust fall of a tank buster where the healers will either catch an Asuna the Vuln stacks or at least one of the tanks gets 100 to zeroed. Watch your Caloric Intake 1 is step 1 in Athena's anti-exercise program diet plan. The more you move once the mechanic gets going, the more likely it is that you'll spontaneously combust. Spread out to see who the first two pillarmen are that the whole mechanic will be built around. Line up the pillarmen support on D and the DPS on B. Whatever the pillarmen roles are, their counterparts will also be drafted into the war and will need to stand with the appropriate DPS to A and appropriate support to C. Everyone else groups up in the middle. It is, at this point, that you must now exclusively move with purpose. It is not my usual hyperbole to say that any extraneous movement will get your ass killed. 
you spend two, four, eight hours progging from your stationary desk chair so I know you have it in you not to move, grab your gamer bottle, and focus up. The goal for the first bout of movement is to match up each of the four wind buffs with each of four fire buffs. The priority is complicated as fuck. I understand we didn't set light party quadrilles in the marker dance earlier, but it's generally accepted that if you're on the left half of the conga line, you're light party 1, and the right is light party 2. The priority spider web nightmare begins with support 1, starting D and going counterclockwise. Then support 2 is A clockwise, then DPS 1 is D counterclockwise, and DPS 2 just makes like sea life into plastic six pack rings and falls into the empty hole. All of this happens while keeping in mind that you're stacking with a buff that you, yourself, are not. You do this step row by step bro because if someone goes into the wrong spot and somehow manages to still stack up with an opposite buff, then the later people can just fill in the empty and forgotten spots, but that's only two thirds of the mechanic done. Now everyone takes an AoE and four people get marked as Mahjong wins who must spread to the appropriate cardinals. North-South only walk until they're lightly kissing the next ground grid line, and East-West run to passionately make out with the side of their corresponding numerical waymarks. As for the other four, I introduce you to Line Strat. Two of the four will have fires and two will have nothing, and you need to stack onto B and D by the end. If the clockwise pattern alternates fire nothing, fire nothing, then A and C swing clockwise and it's easily done and dusted. But if the fires are adjacent, then oh boy do we get to fuck some shit up. Line Strat. Draw a line between your two fires. This will leave one wind on each side of the line, and from here you now know who you'll be standing with. If you are then the player in the pair that is not on the B or D ring marker, move to your line buddy who is, and then FREEZE! Everybody clap your damage buttons. This dance metaphor may be getting a little out of hand. Once the caloric buffs expire, you'll be free to move about the cabin as you prep for one of two different exoflare patterns where you have to go with either your blood family or your chosen one. The light party that you were born into, or the co-workers with similar jobs you chose to associate with along the way. Blood pattern has north-south meteors and splits east-west, while the chosen pattern has east-west meteors and splits north-south with melee jobs north. Regardless of the pattern, you'll spread along the wall like a police lineup so that you are not consumed by each other's fires, their one desires. Number two, keep it going. Then just find a new safe spot from the flares until it's time to... <laughs> We're about to roleplay comp sci students with all of these pangenesis ones and zeros. Line up in sequence as the buffs will come out to assign all of your level 60 close dance partner positions. Two players will get one stack of this buff and should take a step backwards. Neither of the players practice the choreography on their own time and are a tad bit embarrassed. Two players will also be outright missing the buff altogether and should step to the front of the line. For both of these pairs, identify if you are the rightmost player or the leftmost one, which will have you fleeing to that corresponding side of the arena because if either of the zeros have to cross the midpoint, it's gonna be tight. The zeros take the outermost towers, and then when the next columns appear, the zeros take to the north and ones take to the south. If your powers of observation exceed that of a LaCroix fruit flavor content, then you'll notice that there are two ominous spikes in each of these towers, which is where the four two-stack players will come into play. Light, dark. 16 seconds is short, and 20 seconds is long. So if you take a peek at their dating profiles, they'll all be listing themselves at 20 units long. The goal is to end up on the side with the starting tower opposite your buff. Short partners with the zeros, and long partners with the ones. This remains true through the first two columns of towers, and then at the third column of towers, the square dance caller shouts, SCURRY AND SCATTER! Or whatever southern callout makes you change dance partners. At this moment, check your debuffs. If you don't have anything relating to elements, then you just continue on in your row as if nothing happened. If you have an element debuff, I'll go ahead and ruin the surprise that it will be the wrong one to continue forward, so you'll need to swap either forward or back. Now the other minor part of this that you're probably already accidentally doing is giving birth to slime children at some of the towers. You'll just need to linger long enough to, uh, birds and bees, and then leave your children behind when you realize your food buff is running low and you've run out of milk. Back at the present, all of the ones and twos should group up in the south and prepare on the left for another one of those tank busters that started the phase. Meanwhile, the Zero players get to play Babysitter and pick up the three little tykes on their side of the arena before they projectile vomit these purple AoEs that need to be taken to fucking Narnia lest they clip the whole team. But also don't fuck over your right side Zero because if they go too far past the middle of the arena then that tank buster is going to become a shared one faster than you can scroll down and share the link to this video. Or hit that sub bell, ring ding ding. 
shove a like thumb up my ass, it'll probably hurt less than trying to prod P11, which I'm glad you noticed I didn't make a video on and nope I never will. Fuck I hate that guy. Yeah, so that felt weird. I don't think I want to do those self plugs again. Classical 2 is next on the docking, and you'll start just like Classical 1 and B-Pog your shapes. But, uh-oh, Pepe hands. The shapes are all about to get moved, lol. So now I don't agree with how Party Finder solves this, but far be it from me to drag you into my shitty takes. Your end location is going to be exactly diagonally opposite to where you and your partner's Classical 1 spot would have been. When you think you know where that is, start bunny hopping in place. When you're both hopping, waste no time in moving in tandem to the new spots. It's important for you to move together because you still have those pesky PlayStation cables tying you together and that summoner is not going to budge on slide casting to maintain their rotation. I thought PlayStation was wireless now, but clearly you've been brogging too long and haven't been taking long enough controller recharge food breaks. If you unplug one another, then you'll surge the entire power grid and it'll be everyone's ass. Get to your new spots before the shapes poof into the dynamis generated by Para 3 memes and you'll be tethered to them like before. The other difference is that now you'll first soak the olive oil pizza slices and then dodge between the shapes, which is, as far as the thematics of reversal are concerned, also appropriately ordered. This then leads into another Crush Helm tank death swift cast fiasco and ultimately, no, savagely, rolls into caloric intake too. The intake joke here is that everyone has static spots where they take their green wind arrow except for somebody seems to have the unrelenting burn of well-documented yet poorly treated gonorrhea. And that's where I, Dr. Fizzrange, finally get to flex my totally legitimate PhD in raid mechanics and intake the poor ill madame or monsieur to grant them my do-nothing spot in middle and don their usual spot as my own. That said, everyone has a hyper-specific position again because it's got the same calorie counting bullshit as the first iteration. But now, one person is going to eat a rather a spicy meat to ball and then take a fat bowel cleansing shit before shoving one of said meatballs into their teammate's mouth as a prank. The prankee will dodge the bowel movement towards the next unassuming victim, and the pranker just needs to spread away while keeping in mind your reverse pedometers. In retrospect, spicy meatballs in that joke could have been replaced with Haribo sugar-free gummy bears if I thought the people on mass would understand the gastrointestinal turmoil that these little guys would rack you with. But instead, I leave you with a burning curiosity and a forthright warning. Continue to pass the tray of meatballs around while excluding the afflicted player in the middle. Get fed, smack your friend on the ass or shoulder depending on how weird you want to avoid making it. Hell, Lollifels will only be able to go for the calves anyway. Once everyone has had it, everyone will, open square bracket, S close square bracket, do the windy thing. Let the flame buffs fall off and don't get clipped by the exaflares leading to the final mechanic, UAV2. It's back to center standing domain expansion as Athena pulls out the last of her dragon balls to wish you all dead. Stack up and look for the Diagonal Angel to tell you which side is safe based on the same priority as UAV1 except you're going to end up in an intercardinal poopy puddle before stacking up to confer between horizontal mambo and country hoedown dance positions. Make sure your chains are broken before spreading out melee's far and caster's short while not going so far as to get hit by the belly button beam laser and then show Nen Athena that you aren't messing around. Attack that titan of a boss with your last of your dying will conviction and bleach the stain of her existence from the world, but not before she pulls out one last combo of attacks. This is where it's important to have your appropriate tank melee range healer pair Nakama focus so that you can both get through this in one piece. Four angels will descend and target either all of your supports or all of your DPS who will need to stretch their tether all the way out without stumbling into the hidden movement tech that is any movement or gap close ability jettisoning you off the edge. Everyone else will need to body block for their partner before healing up and SAO switching your position so that now the other players get a turn getting down, Mr. President. Keep hitting your damage buttons and take down her tentacles. Eight tickles. Five tickles, one tickle, and congratulations. You've completed both P12S and, presumably, the Jeff and Anna Bezos raid tier. Get your little lottle roll on your lot for the lotto's lotto, then lose your lot of lotto as you cry a whole lotto. It's just like rolling on a housing plot lotto. Go watch a real guide.